your boy at Bandicoot101 and today we are building a computer for the first time on, you, on my YouTube channel. Uh, I'm not sure what to call it yet, if you guys have any uh, names or suggestions down below, uh, I think so. I've, I've got my big computer over there currently called Tachyon, which is, or Tachyon, which is a hypothetical particle faster than the speed of light, just to as a you know metaphor of how fast it is. Um, I really haven't had any time to get dressed or anything. I'm you know just got out of bed, but my parts have arrived this morning quite early at nine o'clock, and it's the holidays, so I'm never up that early. Um, but we're going to build the computer anyway. Uh, I haven't got any ideas for names for it, but our parts list is quite minimal. This is a low-end gaming PC, low to mid-end gaming PC, but it will be quite impressed with the results I think because I've. I've been comparing these products and we should have a pretty good results when it comes to it. So, our parts consist of a Dell chassis. Now this is a old chassis I have that I've taken all old stuff out of from the XPS 8500. It holds micro ATX motherboards and um, yeah, it'll be absolutely fine. It doesn't look great but any 50 quid chassis will do. I'm just doing it with this one because I have one spare lying around. Uh, so, for the power supply we are using a 400 and what is it, 460 watt Dell pre-installed pre power supply in the case. I'll take that and put it back in. All you have to do to put a power supply in is slot it into the power supply slot and screw it in place. Uh, I'll take the side panel off the PC now anyway because we're going to be building in it. It's a bit stiff, I haven't opened it in weeks. So yeah, here we have the power supply, 460 watt Dell one. I'm not sure how well in focus that is. I would have an odd focus when the camera makes too much noise. But um, yeah, 460 watt power supply. It's got all the connections I need to build the PC. I've also got a one terabyte hard drive as a storage and boot drive. I can't afford an SSD to go with it. This is a budget build, remember. All this together, including case, storage, and all your parts, is probably going to come to less than £500 or $600. So, uh, let me count it up. One, two, three, four, five, yeah, it should be about £450, which is equivalent to about $550-$600. US dollars. So this is quite a cheap PC. So I've got my hard drive pre-installed, all that is screws holding that in and screws holding my power supply in place. Uh, you have to remove the lid and stuff to get them in, but all they do is slot in place and screw in with a Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, so that's both of those in place. That's very easy. But we're going to do this in real time so you guys can understand how to build a PC. So it might take a while. Bear with us guys, because we're actually doing it in real time. So we've got a fan in the back of the PC here as well. I'm having this pushing air into the PC while the power supply draws air out. This should give a slightly positive air pressure. Uh, this means that there'll be less dust build up in the system because the air will actually be pushing out the gaps instead of sucking in. And it should keep the system cleaner over time, meaning it won't need quite as much maintenance in the long run. So I'll grab all these parts. I've actually taken them all out of the boxes already. So uh, I just thought, I thought I'd have these boxes here to show you. So our parts, this also consists of a H81ME motherboard, which is an Asus motherboard, budget ITX chassis motherboard with a socket LG L M50, which is just a motherboard, you know, it connects all our parts together. Supports DDR3 and all that stuff, and Haswell processors, which is on the 1150 socket. Our 1150 processor is the Intel Pentium, you probably can't see it that far away, but the Intel Pentium G3258, or as I like to call it, the Pentium K, because this is the Pentium with an unlocked multiplier, meaning we can overclock this bad boy and get some pretty decent results out of it, making this a gaming CPU, despite not having hyper-threading. It looks small, only two cores, but when you can clock them at over 4.5 gigahertz, so I'm probably going to try and get about 4.2 because I'm using the stock cooler, we're going to see some pretty decent results with that. And for our graphics card, we've gone with the NVIDIA GTX 750 Ti, budget oriented, I have one lying around, and I figured it run games at medium to high settings at 1080p on this TV back here, which I'll be using. So um, that's an absolutely okay graphics card for the build, and it should be absolutely fine. I've never built a computer from the ground up before, so this should be quite entertaining. I've taken mine apart multiple times and upgraded every part of it, so theoretically I should be fine. And for our RAM, we're using two sticks of Dell 4GB stuff that I had in my old PC. So we have 8 gigs of RAM in total, here's the Pentium processor, and I'll show you guys how to build a computer. So step one, you want to put the power supply and uh, hard, drives, mother, hard drives and stuff in your chassis like I have. As you can see, I've got my terabyte hard drive and power supply pre-installed with screws, very easy. Just That's really easy, you really don't need anyone to show you how to do that. So the motherboard should come with a rear I.O. plate, that slots into the back of your PC, you undo it, you find which way around it goes, which is that way, and... There should be a little hole at the back of your PC back here, which you just slots into so your motherboard can take out the back. I've got to try and click this in place now. It needs a little, it needs a fair bit of force to click these in place. You can hear it click in all around like that. And then we have the rear I/O plate installed and ready to have the motherboard put in. Well, half of it. I've got to get the whole thing slotted through first. That's that bit. Oh God! Oh, bite your finger if you get caught on the metal. Don't get your finger caught on the metal. There you go, there's a rookie mistake right there. And that is all popped in place, I think, sticking out. 
Yeah, perfect. So that's the rear IO plate installed. It's just back here. Uh, I'll see if you guys can see it at all. That plate back there at the bottom, that has to just pop in place. It's very easy. You just have to push it in place without using a bit of force. Uh, it's not like it's a delicate electrical part. You're not going to break it very easy. So next we have the motherboard. Now for this, it's in an anti-static bag just so you can't break it. Same with the graphics card, but I've already taken that out. So for the motherboard, you want to put this on an anti-static workbench. I would recommend using the box, but do not use the anti-static wrap it came in because the outside of the wrap is actually um, charged and it can shock your motherboard. So do not do that. Use, um, use the box that your motherboard came in, not the bag. Just remember that, guys. So you place it on the box and then we have an anti-static workbench for the motherboard to work on. Now this bit you're probably going to want me to zoom in for. Apologies I'm not wearing socks by the way, I'm just going to fold my feet. But uh, this bit, hang on, this is so professional. It's so early I haven't actually planned this at all. But uh, basically, like frame, zoom in and focus. There we go, right, now this is the ITX motherboard designed for LGA 2011 sockets. So first of all you want to get your processor, we want to install the processor first. So what you've got to do is you see this the, the plastic cover, this is where the processor goes. Now this is the processor itself, this is the Pentium G, I'm just going to call it the Pentium K because it's the unlocked Pentium, the 20th anniversary edition. So what you want to do is you want to um, see, you want to raise this plastic arm here, hold the motherboard steady while you do so, and it should lift the socket up like so. So it exposes the socket, now this is very delicate, try not to get dust in it, do not touch the pins, you will break it. Uh, now this, you've just got to take the Pentium or the processor you've got out of its wrap, and place it in the actual socket, which is quite difficult. You've got to make sure you've got it in the right corner as well. There should be a diagram on it that has a, an arrow where the Pentium is going to go, and there should be a golden arrow on the Pentium itself. You probably can't see it, but there's a golden arrow on the Pentium that has to line up with the socket, and you have to drop it in place without actually um, without putting any force on it whatsoever. It should just sit in place, give it a little wiggle to make sure it's all okay, and then lower the retention arm. Now this should pop the plastic out of place and I'm expecting it to bounce off now like a mental patient like so like that and then you slide the retention arm under the holder and we should have an installed Pentium like that um, I'm not sure if that's installed correctly I'm gonna I don't really want to get it out and test it because it looks fine so that's your Pentium installed and then you have your processor installed like so um, the plastic wrap should just pop off and then you can just move that out of the way because you don't need that anymore uh, next, you're probably going to want to install the cooler. Now that you can have an aftermarket one, like a liquid cooler or a big tower cooler, but we're going to be using the stock one because they're cheap and it comes with the processor. So it has the thermal paste, which is this stuff at the bottom, the brown stuff, pre-applied to make sure that you can um, cool it without having to buy extra parts. Uh, you want to unwrap the fan because that's actually going. You want to unwrap the cable that comes on it because that's going to actually be in the way of the fan. I don't know if you can see that, but you have to unwrap the cable from around it because else you, it's going to be in the way of the. Um, fan blades and it will not operate uh, so yeah then we have to install the actual thing onto the board which should be relatively easy because it should just slot into the holes on the motherboard like so now you want to make sure all the uh, all the corners on the actual thing are uh, turned away from where the arrows are pointing like that you don't want it locked in you want it turned away from where the arrows are pointing on the actual um I'll focus on it you want it turned away like so, you see they can turn towards the arrow or away from, you want to turn away because that's optimum for installation, you only turn them away when you're taking it off. So you install these by literally making sure they're all turned away from the arrow position on the actual part and then install this by applying pressure on opposite corners. So you get this in all four holes and you apply pressure on opposite corners of the cooler like so, which should actually lock it in place like that which it has well that was quite, quite relatively easy actually guys you should be quite surprised by how easy it is but uh, that should just pop in place like that and then you have your cooler installed um, you want to push down a little bit more to make sure it's locked in place tight because if it doesn't have contact all over the processor it will overheat but that feels absolutely okay to me um, that feels locked in, it's holding, it's picking the motherboard up, so I'm assuming that's absolutely a-okay. Looks fine. Then after that's installed, your processor is installed, other than the fan, which what I would recommend doing, you can see it has a long cable with it. Uh, there's going to be a CPU fan header on your motherboard, but just to make sure the wires are out of the way a bit, I'd twist it a little bit, just to make sure that the cables wrap around themselves a bit to uh, alleviate any um, unwanted cabling, because it can get in the way a little bit. I'd wrap this around the edge of the... Uh, 
fan, not actually into the fan, because that would not be a very smart move on anyone's part. But yeah, do that, and then that just literally slots into the fan header on the motherboard, which is up here. It's four pins, and it should just easily slot in place. There's only one way to do it, because it's got a notch. Once you plug that in, your fan and CPU cooler are installed and ready to go. Um, if there's any way of getting the cable out of the way a bit more, I'd recommend doing it, but uh, for me, I think that's all okay at the moment, so that's just going to rest over the top of it. It shouldn't get hit by the fan at all, and that should be a okay. Next, you want to install your RAM. Now, I have two sticks of RAM, DDR3, 1600 MHz, so this should be absolutely a okay for the processor and feed it with plenty of information. Uh, with these ones, they're literally just sticks. I like they have a notch in them at one point, so they can only go in one way, and they slot into these large yellow slots down here. They won't, might not be yellow on your motherboard, but... You get what I mean, they just slot into those. So what you want to do is you want to put either end in at the same time, like that, making sure it's facing the right way, and apply pressure on either corner of the RAM at the equal to, an equal amount at the same time so it clicks in place. Now, these should, might be quite stiff. Ah, there you go, you heard it click. Perfect. And then the side bit should lock into the RAM like that, and then you have that one RAM stick installed. Do this again with the next one to get the second RAM stick installed. This is actually quite time consuming, this is going to be quite a long video I think, how long are we in? 8 minutes. Oh, we've got 8 minutes left of the recording before my memory stick fills up, so then I'll have to, I'll have to actually um, copy it to my current working computer and then continue. But then you insert this RAM stick, like so, and that should be your RAM installed and raring to go and that is your ram and processor installed guys well done you've actually basically got a working computer now this would work but we're going to add other components like our absolutely beastie sexy evga graphics card for our gaming and rendering purposes even editing and stuff so we're going to add that in later so uh first of all we need to get this into the actual um into the actual case this is a more tricky bit. You're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver for this and the, the case you have should come with mounting hardware like screws and stuff for it, which I've kept in a yogurt pot because I'm just very organised. Um, so yeah, it's, this case, this whole build by the way is about, um, I've just got to zoom the camera right now, is about, um, this whole, whole build is about how much it would be, about 500 quid, which is about $600, excluding the operating system. I've got my operating system on a memory stick, um, I'm going to install via that, but um, obviously we don't condone here at Ed Bandicoot 101, we don't condone ever, you know, illegally using motherboards or anything, we want to, uh, illegally using operating systems, we want you to buy, them, buy the operating system, so including the price of an operating system, you're looking at another £80 for Windows 8.1, or if you want to go a bit higher and get 8.1 Pro like I will be using, it might cost you 100 120 which is equivalent to about $150. US. Um, so yeah, but now we need to install this, the motherboard should have standoffs, uh, it needs standoffs to stand on it. Uh, there should be they should either be in your case or you might have to pre-install them with little thumb screws. They just turn in, make sure you're marking the correct bits for the type of motherboard you've got. I've got a micro ATX motherboard, so they will literally just sit on the pre-installed ones I've already got here. Um, so you've got to move the cables out of the way. Uh, we've got quite a few in this case actually, so just get them out of the way of the base of the system, else they are just going to get in the way and annoy you. I'm going to tuck all the stuff like the fan, the fan headers and stuff out of the way for the moment. Uh, I've got USB 3 and this uh, motherboard doesn't support USB 3, so uh, I'm not going to be installing a disk drive for this build because honestly, when was the last time you put a disk in your computer? Honest, can you remember? Because I, I actually don't think I can. I think mean, my, my mum bought one of the Now albums and I put it on my iTunes, so you know, it's pretty pointless. We can get all the cables out of the way, make sure there's no cable clutter in this area down here. Pick the motherboard up by the heatsink to make sure you're not touching any delicate parts, and it should literally just sit in place like so. Now uh, you can't really see, I'm going to grab the camera. Ooh, oh, see, it's good I do all that bicep training when you, I never lift the whole camera up. I've got a big ass camera on the end of a massive tripod. Right, there we go. Right, you're in the PC now. You can see the motherboard literally. I guess we're going to be here for the rest of the get video really. So the motherboard just sits into the PC like this, and there should be screw holes specific to. Right, I've got to get all this in place now, so that has to go under all that. Oh god, this is going to be really fiddly, guys. Oh, what's that not going in? Yeah, it has to slot in place. Um, basically, you might need to wiggle it around a bit and play with it all, but it will all slot in place eventually, I guarantee you. I'm going to turn the camera off and resume when it's in place. 
Right guys, once the motherboard's actually finally in place, it doesn't take three weeks to actually line it up, um, you gotta put the screws in. Now they should be pre-installed stand, if your case is only supports micro ATX motherboards, they should be pre-installed standoffs uh, that it'll screw into. Uh, they should hold it securely and there'll be little screws that look a bit like this with a flat end on them to make sure you don't damage your motherboard when screwing them in. You don't want them in too tight, you want them quite tight, but you don't want to be you know, ripping apart the actual uh, stuff that makes your motherboard up because that will come back and bite you in the butt when you try and turn your PC on and it won't boot. Um, this is a tiny motherboard actually. I think the one that comes pre-installed in Dell's motherboards is slightly bigger than Micro ATX because uh, this has only got one, two, three, four holes I can see that are actually going to, wait, maybe maybe more than that. No, four holes I can see that are actually going to hold it in place while, it, uh, while it's operating. Uh, I think it's meant to have five but I'm assuming four screws, if done tightly enough, should hold this absolutely tiny motherboard up in place anyway, because uh, it is absolutely tiny. It, micro ATX motherboards are renowned for being the smallest. Well, obviously they are the smallest, but they're renowned for being absolutely tiny. They're designed for real, real small compact builds. I don't know why I'm putting one in this really, because it's not a tiny, tiny case. I mean, I've got four. I've got room for four expansion slots, but uh, I'm only using. Um, there you go, that's three installed, a couple more, I think it should be fine. Um, obviously they are, not, they are used in micro ATX builds, like uh, very small gaming systems. In fact, if you use a small enough system, you can even get these things into a very small design stuff and you can use it as like a NUC or a, oh shit, as a NUC or a, um, don't worry, they hit the power supply and not the motherboard, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Else we're not going to have a posting system. As you can tell, this is a very professional video, you know, this is Linus Tech Tips level, how to build a PC. Love you Linus, by the way, You're, you are my life. Um, so yeah, this is actually not that difficult, you just got to get all the screws in. Try to uh, hand tighten them first or get them at a perfect angle to make sure that you're not threading them. Uh, obviously that's what I'm doing here, I don't want to thread my screws, else they will be absolutely wrecked and incapable for use another time. In fact, it's pretty impossible to get this screwdriver in straight anyway because there's edgings on the case that are in the way. But uh, we'll do our best. I guess at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. If you've got a cheap build, it doesn't really matter if you thread the screws a bit because, uh, you know, 50 quid case isn't the end of the world. But uh, if you want to get that perfectly, you probably don't want to be threading the screws because if you're reusing the case in the future, which I'm probably not going to be, this is going to be a built system for as long as this PC lasts and a... Uh, Probably just be chucking it all out at the end because it is a bit. Uh, it's, a, it's a it's a low end build. I built this as a spare for running games on medium to high settings at 1080p on my screen when I have friends over. So whenever I'm not in the gym, which is a very rare occasion, I can uh, plug this into the. Well, I'm gonna have it constantly plugged into the um, TV next to my bed, and I'll have a computer, my main driver over there, over that way, and my TV just behind me here. I'll be using with this. So that's the motherboard installed. That is. In place, absolutely fine. The heat sink's all in. Uh, that should uh, all be locked in place now and operating at optimum efficiency. Uh, now, the next thing is wiring up the power supply and case to the motherboard itself. I think that's actually everything needing. So, actually, no, we want to get the graphics card in next. So, this is the graphics card. We've got an EVGA GTX 750 Ti for the win. Um, I've got it with a backplate as well because I used to have it in a windowed case. So, I bought a backplate for it for $20 or 20 quid, which is about $30. Um, just to make sure it looked a bit nicer, but as I've now got, not got a window on my case anymore, um, it was pretty pointless doing that anyway. So, we want to remove all protective hardware like this um, PCIe Express cover. Now, this slots into the PCIe Express slot, which is down here. Actually, we need to remove parts of the motherboard before we do that, parts of the case. So, here on the back of the case, this case is held on with a, uh, it's got a little black screw that holds on this bit at the back. You can't really see it, but it's got, um... A little cover to make sure you don't break your PCI, ex that the, no one can steal your PCI Express slots. This pops off by sliding it off and then you can, I've already pre-removed them, but you remove these two back bits here, the lines here, and then you can install the graphics card into these slots because it is a dual slot card and will require that space. Now the next big thing is praying to God that this card actually fits in this system because it is a pretty big card and it is going to be a bit of a pain fitting it into place. Ah, we're all in. That was absolutely A-OK -okay and easy as pie. So we now have a graphics card. As you hear, hear it click, it means it's in place. We have our graphics card in place and that should be held securely by that um, 
bracket we just took off a minute ago. So that slots on the back again to hold it in place. And then the screw goes in to make sure the bracket doesn't come off. <clears throat> it's probably not the most secure way of running it. You meant to, I mean, big cases are going to have individual screws for your graphics cards. But um, as it's a 750, it's not the end of the world if it, you know, breaks. This is a very cheap end build. You can tell by the way it's like bodged that this isn't going to be a world class build. Any Wait, do they not fit in that slot? Yeah, they do. Why is that not going in? Hang on, give me a minute, because uh, this is a very weird design, and this has to kind of like slot in the holes, even with the graphics card in the way, which is kind of ridiculous. I'm assuming when Dell built the chassis, they didn't expect anyone to actually upgrade it, but I could tell that by taking it apart, the amount of stuff I had to do to get the cave cases and like the cables and everything out of it, and get the Wi-Fi module out of it, it was soldered onto the case. Like, why would you do that? Why would you do I'm, I'm going to have to run this from LAN anyway, because I don't think it has internet access, this motherboard wirelessly. I'm assuming it doesn't. It was 40 quid. If it does, I'll be very impressed. Because um, I was hoping to run this uh, without using a... No, no, screw that in place. I was hoping to run this without actually using a... Um, do it nice and tight. That should hold the graphics card in place anyway. Like that. That'll do. That ain't coming out anytime soon. So that is the graphics card installed. Uh, that's well, it's not obviously plugged in yet, but that's plugged into the motherboard and all working. So that's vast majority of it actually. We're going to need a SATA cable. The motherboard comes with two SATA cables, but we're going to be using my old ones anyway because uh, they're cheap and cheerful, and I like the color. I actually really like the color of the ones that um, come with the motherboard, and I'm probably going to be installing them into my. The SATA three K, SATA six gigabit cables, SATA three cables, and we're plugging them into my um, main build at some point because I actually really like the colour of them, and I'm a bit of an OCD freak when it comes to um, you know colours in my build, especially my main. I mean this one I'm not obviously, but when I have my main build, I am because it's got a window on the side and I like it looking nice. Um, yeah, I might as well use one of these cables, I guess. I'm only going to use a couple of my. I don't think they're long enough for my main build anyway. I'm just going to take them out of the packet and have a look. So these are SATA cables, or SATA data cables, these ones. Um, these carry a signal from um, you know, one component to another. Uh, they're probably they're a lot faster than USB, which is why they're used for operating systems and stuff. But as you can see, these plug into either a like the motherboard and then into a a um, either a solid state drive, hard drive, optical bay, or uh, maybe even like a RAID device, but anything like that, these plug into um, I'm probably going to use a straight angled one because it's easy to work with in this small case. Uh, so this plugs into the hard drive which you can see is up here into the uh, data connection bit which is this bit on here. This plugs into that like so and then around past the graphics card and into a SATA which you can also even see them but down here ooh, we have, you can't see because the graphics card's in the way but basically you can just like see that yellow bit, that's the 6 gigabit SATA connection. So that'll wrap around the graphics card and into that. Uh, make sure it's the right way, right way around. Oh, well, it's going to be a pain. I might have to use the um, angled one. Uh, yeah, by the way, don't unplug and plug these in too much because SATA cables are, they do have an actual plug in limit. Might be, nah, it's okay. We're using the straight one. If you plug them in, they're only rated to plug in and out like 50 times, which it isn't, I know that sounds like a lot, but like you take a system apart like, 50 times in its lifetime probably, you're actually going to break the SATA cables because they're only designed to last 50 plug-ins and plug-outs. It's going to be a real pain to get into the slot down there with that graphics card in the way. Oh wow, hang on. I've got this. I really don't got this. My hand is too freaking fat. Come on, come on. I'm so close. Just need to hear the little click. Yes! Boom! So that's the SATA installed. Uh, that'll probably, you probably don't want that touching the graphics card too much, so I would tuck that out of the way in any way you can. Um, I'm just going to wrap it around the back of the graphics card like that. As long as it's not touching the fans or the heat sink so it melts, you're probably going to be okay. Um, that should keep it relatively, uh, relatively well um, ventilated. Um, so there's nowhere for the graphics card to get air from apart from from the front of the case. It's probably going to have slightly negative air pressure actually. But yeah, that's that. Uh, next, you've got a case fan at the back here. Oh, so case fan at the back. Uh, as you can see, this has another fan head on it. This plugs into a fan head on the motherboard. We've only got one. Um, it's a three-pin one. I'm hoping it reaches. Else, I'm 
fucked. Right, that goes down onto the three pins like so. Just get it to plug in. That'd be great. Boom. And that's the system fan installed. So that'll be powered off the motherboard. You can use um, the BIOS to control the fan speeds on it. We're just going to have it running at flat out because it's already system fan. Oh, well, we're not flat out because I've got like 1500 RPM, but pretty high because we haven't got any other fans in our system. We don't want to get, we don't want to suffocate, especially when stuff like the um, hard drive isn't cooled individually. So next we want to plug in the power supply to everything. The power supply needs to plug into the motherboard twice. The power supply also needs to plug into the graphics card with the six pin and the hard drive with the SATA data, the SATA power cable. <clears throat> That's all we need to do and then we should have a system that might post if we're lucky. If we're very lucky our system will boot up. So first is 24 pin power. That can only be plugged in one way and that just plugs into the 24 pin on the motherboard. Uh, that easily just reaches down there and plugs in like so. You hear it click in place again, just like that, it was only a little click, but it is in place now. So that just plugs into the motherboard like that, and that's power to the primary pieces of the motherboard. Um, next, you're gonna want to get, oh no, I've got to plug all these data stuff in, haven't I, all the USB stuff. Anyway, okay, right, or any random SATA power, which is looks like SATA, but larger, like the previous one we installed, I uh, just want to plug that into the, um, where's that guy, just plugs into the hard drive anywhere, like that, Whoa. like that, and that's easy, very easy, that just plugs in like that. We also have two six pin uh, peripheral connectors. These need, one of these needs to go into the graphics card, because this is a powered graphics card. Uh, it requires a lot less than the 450 watt power supply can deliver though, so it should be a-okay plugging this into the graphics card. Uh, that plugs in one way as well, but there'll be a pin on it which shows you which way it goes in. And that just clips in place. Easy as pie, just like that. Boom. Bob's your uncle. And that is that. <coughs> um, we also have some USB headers for our motherboard and HD audio and stuff. Uh, we're going to need to plug these in. <laughs> USB... Is AAFP? What's that? That is... Wow, I don't, I've never, I can't remember how all this plugs in. Oh, that's a, I think that's HD audio, and that's USB again. Let's get the USBs plugged in. The trouble is, this case is absolutely tiny, and getting all these plugged in can be a real, I should have put the graphics card in after I've installed all that, really. I'm going to get all these plugged in. Basically, you have lots of little connectors like this. They've all got one pin missing, so that you can't plug them into the wrong place. Uh, I haven't got USB 3, so I won't be showing you how to plug that in. But um, all the USBs plug into the little slots down there on the bottom of the motherboard and it's very easy but it is also time consuming so uh, I'll be back in a minute. Right guys, that was basically the front panel, HD audio, um, HDMI and a memory card reader plugged in. Not HDMI, what was that? That was front panel, HD audio, USB 2 and the USB 2 based front panel memory card reader for the case plugged in. There's no USB 3 on this motherboard so again we won't be using that. Um, now I've got to try and fit the graphics card back in place. So this bit I thought I'd show you because it'd be entertaining. Watching me try and get all these wires out of the way and fit in an 11 inch graphics card in a space where it just will not fit no matter what I do. This is not going to work. Oh, come on you little... Right, it's under all of it. That's a start. I just need to get the PCIe Express lane fitting in. All the wires are getting caught on it. That's going to squash the front panel header. This is an absolutely tiny compact build, guys. I would recommend getting a huge case, just because it's easy to work in, and then doing this, and then building a computer, <laughs> because this case is the size of a gnat's dick, and it just does not seem to work very well at all with gnat's dick-sized cases. Right, that's that actually installed, I think. Um, we're squashing the... Hey, the front panel connector a bit, I think, but actually no, no it's all right. I mean, it's pushed out of the way a little bit, but it's still all plugged in. So as long as the system posts, I'm not too bothered about that. Uh, actually, is that touching the fan? Yeah, it is a bit, isn't it? Let's tuck that around the side, out of the way, out of the way. Come on. Ugh. Which means as long as we tuck that around the side of the graphics card, it shouldn't get in the way of the fan. Well, at the moment it kind of is. Tuck that. Go on. Get around it. Get around it. Go on. See, if nothing else, you can just use this video as entertainment instead of how to build a PC. Because this is actually really flipping difficult. 
is that touching? See, that looks like it's touching, even though I know it's not. It looks like it's touching the fan, and I want to keep the graphics card fans extra clear because they're graphics card fans, and that's probably the most expensive part of this entire build, is my graphics card. So, that's the one thing we want to actually make sure we have installed correctly, because if that breaks, then I'm going to kill myself, because that's the, my favourite part of the system, because it's such a good little graphics card. All right. That looks like it should work fine, in theory. Again, this is all theoretical, it probably won't, it's probably just going to blow up the second I turn it on, but... But... I've got to look like I know what I'm doing, or you're not going to copy me. So, that's... Uh, oh no, we've got the PCIe and the graphics card installed, and then the 4-pin into the motherboard, and then we are done. We are done diddly done done at building the PC. So, 6-pin into the graphics card, like I showed you earlier. Uh, preferably use one that isn't going to get in the way too much because this case side panel has to shut at some point. Oh god, right. I don't like the way that they are very close to the fan. Is there no way of tucking that? That's it, perfect. Tucking that around the graphics card like that. That's what I wanted it to do. Perfect, perfect. Now I've just got to make sure none of these cables are touching the fan and I need to find where the fuck the 4-pin is. There he is. This little 4-pin one, this one, it's like the 6-pin but it's only 4. That plugs into the motherboard which goes there. Very simple, just slots in place and that will power the CPU. That just plugs into the motherboard, it goes one way because it's got a clip on it. That plugs into that and that will give power to the... Uh, to the uh, central processing unit and that means all the fans are pretty much out of the way, this probably won't melt and this might turn on. So guys, if you want to cable manage it, feel free, but I'm absolutely atrocious at cable management, which is why I have such a huge system over there, so I didn't have to cable manage it and it looks nice still, because there's hardly any cables in it anyway. So, that is the PC built, um, I just got to put this back in place and slot it back in and do it all up and put the side panel on, but that there, it should theoretically, be a working computer so I'm gonna plug this bad boy in um, obviously you need to plug in the HDMI to the graphics card or whatever display output you're using and the power supply and obviously internet because uh, this thing doesn't have inbuilt internet I don't think Wi-Fi so uh, let's uh, put this together and I'll show you it if it posts well guys as you can see I've actually managed to get it to boot where actually it works it's really loud because I've got the fans on turbo because I'm going to be overclocking the processor so I might need to sort out the fan RPMs because you can probably hear that. It's really loud but it's really cold like if you put your hand near it it's absolutely freezing so I'm probably going to need to turn those fans down but I've set them to turbo mode in the BIOS so we're going to turn them back down to um, standard I think so it's really loud and kind of annoying but it's all booted. Um, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with it. You can hear it all now, it's working fine, and we're installing Windows at the moment. So I went to the BIOS, I set up the boot path in advance. Also, I um, set up an administrator password on the BIOS so no one can uh, nick my computer and fuck around with my BIOS. They need to know my password, so I've done that. Um, I've also got, uh, I've got a wired connection because I don't think this thing has wireless. I plugged in the USB at the back and it detected it instantly as with the boot path. And um, it's installing Windows as we speak, we're 42% in. When I've got it all up and running and... Um, all the drivers downloaded, I will show you it and maybe give you a few gaming benchmarks if you guys are lucky. So I'll see you in a sec. So guys, while it was installing, I filmed um, I filmed myself now. So while it was installing, I've had a shower and I'm all, all looking normal-ish. Still got my toesies out though, so any of you offended by feet, I'm sorry. But um, almost ready, it's just installing Windows now. I had a problem with the um, finalising your settings. It took about three hours for some reason, it never actually finished it. So I did a hard reboot, because it's not meant to take more than you know, a couple of minutes for that bit. And um, it seems to be working fine now. I've removed the memory stick and deleted all the information on it because I'm using that for my college work. So I've got all that done and um, it's on the way. It's very nearly done. It's almost ready. Do not turn off your PC and change in colour. So I'm assuming it's nearly done because remember I did that with my old one. Um, so yeah, we've effectively got a system working on Windows 8.1. Uh, Pro by the way, so we've got 8 gigs of system RAM, a Pentium that I'm going to overclock after I've updated the UEFI BIOS uh, So it's Pentium K, so it's the, well, I call it that, but it's the unlocked Pentium, the 20 year anniversary one On a H81, here we go, let's start H81-ME motherboard and I'll sign on now and See, it even remembers what wallpaper I had on my old one, it's a GTX 980 Because that's what I've got on my other system and I think they're gorgeous So um, it's already installed on my Nvidia stuff by the looks of it, it's syncing my OneDrive stuff um, 
It's currently a bit of a bad resolution, but we're in. I'll set it all up for you and show you guys when I've got it all working. So guys, I thought I'd show you this. There's this little trick called Ninelight.com where you can actually download, I'll try and get out of the way, where you can actually download all of the um, stuff you need desperately to uh, get your computer running. This includes stuff like Java, uh, Google Chrome, because no one can be bothered to go and download them all in individually. There's a website called Ninelight.com just here. Uh, you scroll down, we're going to want Chrome. You check everything you want. Uh, we're also going to probably want um, Classic Star because it makes it a lot easier. We want Skype. Uh, we're going to want iTunes. We're going to want. What else are we going to want? We're going to probably want. No, I don't really need Audacity. Don't need Spotify. We might need QuickTime for the iTunes files. We're going to need Java. We're going to need. Actually, I'll install Java separately because that one doesn't always work. We're going to want Microsoft Silverlight. We're going to want. Um, oh, WinRAR, obviously. Uh, Anything else we need? None of that we really need. None of that we really need. We're going to want Steam. We're going to want... Mm, don't really need Dropbox. I don't think anything, anything else we need there. I think that's everything we need. So we just install all that lot. And we will see how that works. Get installed of all that lot. Uh, it should download them all there. If I run the file, it will just download it and run. I also am going to need a NVIDIA driver. So if I just go to NVIDIA's website... Basically, if you need to know anything about drivers, then you can probably go to a separate video. But basically, just download all the drivers you need. You're going to need to update the BIOS on your motherboard, the drivers for your stuff like graphics cards and maybe processors. Um, if I go GeForce, I know I've got a 750 Ti in my system, so I go um, desktop GPUs, uh, 750 Ti, more info. And then um, there should be a drivers thing on this somewhere. We can have, oh, where is it? It's probably up top actually, if I go drivers, here we go. You can download the GeForce experience and it'll keep all your drivers up to date for you. Uh, the system's lagging a bit now, I've got all this going. Automatic Dream, oh, yeah, I want GeForce experience. Come on. Oh, it's lagging out. Basically, when I get it going and it's not lagging because of the amount of stuff I'm doing, I will let you guys know because running on a hard drive to boot drive is never a very optimal way of doing anything. So, um, let's get all this done. Close all tabs, installing Silverlight, installing, here you go, accept and continue. Right, I'll install all this and when I've got all my drivers and all my buyers updated, I might take them into my overclock settings. I appreciate this has become a bit of a lengthy video, but we are now installing. Um, I was checking for Windows updates first because I never have my automatic updates on because that really annoys me. So uh, what we're doing at the moment is, um, I've been playing a bit of the Halo beta while it's installing, but we've um, installed... Um, a few games just to make sure it works. We've got 3D Mark demo so we can run 3D Mark Fast Strike to make sure it's all working. We have um, MSI Combustor just to make sure the GPU doesn't overheat because I overclocked that already because I know what my overclock is on that specific card, which is plus 100 megahertz on the core clock and 675 megahertz on the um, what should we call it on the memory clock. So we are currently looking at a graphics card, the 750 Ti, uh, overclocked by by about you know 10% margin. So we're going to get some decent. Decent frame rate with it. It's going to form near on six, uh, 760 at stock. So, um, as the um, obviously the EVGA 750 Ti is the best one anyway. So we should have some pretty decent results. I'm excited to see how this does. Uh, it's been taking ages because running off a mechanical hard drive takes weeks. I haven't flashed the BIOS yet. I've downloaded them home to this memory stick. So um, I'll be flashing them the second I've got a load of stuff installed, and I'll be overclocking the Pentium G3 3258, which is what I call the Pentium K. And then we will have a pretty, pretty capable, compact gaming PC. Um, it's still a bit loud, but I'm going to have to keep the fans on like that because everything in it is running so cold. One case fan. Uh, my graphics processor at idle is running at like what 36? No, less than that. 25 degrees, I think it said. Maybe Geo Precision X. While still doing a fair, fairly fair, you know, workload. And obviously not for graphics processor, but doing a little bit of lifting, and it's like. 25 degrees, so it's absolutely freezing in that case. My whole room is a bit cold actually, with the fans at like 90% capacity. But um, yeah, it's not a silent workstation by any means. But if that's what it takes to overclock this thing to just over four gigahertz with um, a crappy H81 motherboard, that is what we're going to do. So this thing is probably going to be my secondary rig for my friends when they come over and play games, and it's working pretty well at the moment. Um, I'm installing other games. I've got Battlefield 4 installing and Grand Theft Auto because I play it a lot, and it'd be fun to play on the TV as well. Ultra settings with some Ice Enhancer stuff, maybe. Um, it won't run Ice Enhancer on Ultra settings with my with my graphics card. I wouldn't have thought, but we'll see how we do. 
Um, I'll be doing some other tests as well, of course, when it's actually all up and running. I've installed all the NVIDIA updates, I've got the GeForce Experience working, I've installed Origin so I can have Battlefield, I've installed Steam so I can have all my games and got all that working. got my overclocking software, I'm using EVGA Precision X and I'm using MSI Compositor as well as 3D Mark to test my overclock, which I know is fine anyway, but I like having them just in case I you know, do an upgrade in the future or anything like that. I might get GPU Z in the meantime while that's checking for stuff. Um, I'm currently downloading some other videos on my YouTube channel at the moment, I'm currently downloading some Halo multiplayer gameplay from Halo 5 beta so if you guys want to check that it's probably been uploaded before this to be honest so go and check that out and um, I'll be back once I've got my bios updated I promise. Right guys as you can see we still haven't updated the bios I keep lying to you but we are doing a stress test at the moment after everything's downloaded we're running um, MSI's combustor with the furry donut on maximum anti aliasing and um, also heavy load which is a CPU stress test, just to make sure I'm running it for about 20 minutes, make sure we don't get any ridiculous temperatures. Uh, max we feel on the CPU at the moment is 58 degrees Celsius, and that's overclocked to 3.6 megahertz apparently, just by, by the motherboard, I didn't do that. So, um, at 3.6 gigahertz even, 3.6 gigahertz, we are looking at about 58 degrees tops with the graphics card, 100% word, 98% usage, which is hitting 76 degrees Celsius. So, um... So I'm eating at the moment, which is why I'm burping and being all lovely. But um, yeah, the moment temperatures are fine, so I'm going to update the bios in a couple of minutes just to make sure this test doesn't fail. And then I'll overclock. So guys, as you can see, I've got a sort of finished overclocking. I don't want to get it too high because remember, we're still using that stock cooler. Um, at the moment, you can see I'm running it at 4 gigahertz, uh, so 4 times 40 the base clock. And I've got that running at 1.28 volts. I think I can get the volts down a little bit, that's what I'm doing at the moment, because it was originally 1.3. Um, it isn't that stable, because at 1.3 it was crashing every about 10 minutes, but at the moment at 1.28 volts, it's been running for 16 minutes on a stress test, with a GPU stress test in the background, just to see what max temps we get. Um, we're looking at the moment of about 74 maximum on the processor, with around the high 60s and low 70s normally, when it's stressing for about 15 minutes. So mid 70s is as hot as it gets and the GPU, because it's in that small confined case, uh, gets to about 81 to 82 degrees, uh, nothing above 85 I've ever seen. So it's sitting about 82 normally with the uh, with that ACX cooler on it, <coughs> but um, yeah, it seems to be okay, obviously that's because of the lack of airflow in the case. I've got all the fans running on silent mode because uh, as you could probably hear in the other bit of the video, it was way too loud. I'd rather have it running hotter and quieter and die quicker because it is such a low end system than I would have it, you know, blaring out and lasting longer. So, yeah, it's all running fine. I've tested it on 3D Mark Firestrike. We get a score of 4,420 something. So, uh, it's a very low end gaming PC, but it's a gaming PC nonetheless. It's a lot more powerful than most regular PCs. And um, it runs every game I've tried so far throwing out. It doesn't open Far Cry 4 for some reason, and it doesn't like opening some games, but. What I can also do is stream from my bigger PC over there and stream games by like Steam in-home streaming. So, uh, all running good. So, I'll, that is the round up of the video. It's a great system if you just want a basic little gaming rig for, I don't know, a friend or someone that just wants to get into PC gaming, get into that PC community. It's a great option. Grab it because it's just really good. It's fine. You should build a system like this for low-end gaming instead of forking out all your money on it for two grand system if you don't game much or if you not much of a PC enthusiast. A little system like this will keep you going. This won't, won't have to be upgraded to run any game on low settings at 1080p for the next, what, I don't know, two years at like every game on low settings, I would have thought, at least, easy. So I hope you guys have liked. Remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at Bandicoot101. Like my Facebook page at Bandicoot101. Um, the links will be down in the description below. I just thought I'd say I've also got an overclock on the graphics card of 100 megahertz on the core and 675 on the memory with a two, six, well, six millivolt voltage increase on the graphics card and the fans are set at auto and that's all the overclock really that's all i've done and you can see it's stress testing fine and lasting what 20 minutes now so i haven't really got any worries about the system i think it's all good and i'll see you guys very soon with another gaming or tech video at bandicoot 101